the uh, livery of the London Brick Company, a major company in the Bedfordshire area who had a very large fleet of these vehicles uh, in the late 1930s. And this one very nicely restored in authentic livery, fleet number 61. Uh, and it's got the AC uh, diesel engine in it, which even in the late 30s was still a reasonable innovation. It's probably the ultimate uh, pre-war heavy truck design. And these were a very, very familiar sight over the uh, roads of South East England delivering bricks, many of them remaining in service until the later 1950s, and several, and I believe this is one, spent a later life on the fairgrounds hauling their equipment. So long-lived vehicles and a very nicely restored example there. That's followed by a clutch of the Morris J-types. This was a very popular vehicle produced by the uh, Morris Company. 10 hundred weight uh, carrying capacity and a 1500cc uh, engine to power it along. Most of them were delivered in van form, but the first one here has what's known as a car version um, uh, carried out onto it, which turns it into a little minibus, uh, if you like, for estate use or a small hotel, um, taxi use uh, maybe. And the second one uh, is a, a similar example that's been fitted with, uh, uh, that's been uh, converted into a minibus uh, form. This is Rich Chapman's example, dated from 1952. The one in front is the earlier uh, vehicle, the, uh, the JB. They were powered by the overhead valve engine rather than the uh, side valve job. And the third one in the uh, trio is uh, Ray Morphew's uh, example, dating from uh, 1955. And again, this one has got side windows and seats inside as well. Very popular by all sorts of small traders, particularly people who worked on the markets because of the sliding doors and relatively narrow body. It was a very manoeuvrable vehicle, very easy to slip down through the market stalls and uh, into the uh, side streets. Interesting. There are three with side windows, all the utility conversion uh, models. And all converted by different people, I think, by the looks of them as well. Yes, all with others. various yeah. designs but no actual van version, although we do have one out at the side of the arena there. Uh, now we come to a, uh, a very notable design of vehicle, the Scammell Mechanical Horse. The Scammells were best known, of course, for their very large, heavy trucks, but the Mechanical Horse uh, was developed by them in the 1930s. The examples we have here today are the types that were uh, built for the uh, railway companies, and British railways in particular, in the uh, post-war period. Now the example in front of us at the moment is showing just how manoeuvrable a mechanical horse is, and also how quickly and easily the, uh, the trailer can be disconnected from the, uh, the tractor unit. The uh, tractor unit has got a special coupling arrangement devised by Scammells, and as you will see, it just slides with a couple of guide rails underneath the trailer, it automatically lifts the trailer supporting wheels as it goes in and it locks itself to the trailer. Ideal of course for quick and easy manoeuvring of trailers in the very confined spaces of railway goods yards and that's why they proved to be particularly popular with the railway companies. We have two examples here from the uh, early 1950s period when these little vehicles were probably at their zenith. The style of uh, cab, all steel, uh, fully enclosed cab, a great improvement on the early open cab versions that uh, were built before the war. The, the railway companies used these until the early 1960s when uh, heavy vehicle plating and testing was introduced. And the configuration of these vehicles was such that they just couldn't comply with the new regulations uh, for braking, etc. And they were rapidly withdrawn in the mid-1960s uh, uh, in favour of more conventional vehicles. A shame in a way, because the vast majority of them were broken up very, very quickly. In fact, I think more trailers survived than tractor units, because farmers often took the trailers on for something to carry the hay on. And they're doing a little pirouette in the corner of the uh, arena for us here now. We're going to um, a much uh, heavier type of vehicle now with our next entry, uh, number 70, and this is the uh, Leyland Beetle of uh, Peter Hedger. Leyland Company were uh, synonymous with uh, heavy haulage for a good many years, and uh, the Beaver, they uh, named 
during the 1930s, they named many of their trucks after various sorts of animals, and the beaver was one of their midway models. And this is something of an interim model between the uh, pre-war and the uh, post-war designs, and sounding absolutely splendid as it ticks on. The 20 plate on the back reminding us that for many years, heavier vehicles were restricted to uh, low speeds on the road, and a vehicle of this size was only allowed to travel 20 miles an hour, which was really quite ludicrous. Now we come to another Morris van. This is the, the JB model. It's from 1957, brought along by Peter Bish uh, today. It uh, is a later version of the J series that we saw earlier. There was one other in between. And by this time, this one you'll see is badged Austin Morris. It was the uh, British Motor Corporation had uh, merged and similar vehicles were produced under the Austin Morris uh, name. Uh, not very many of these survived, but it was a typical van of the period with a, what was termed a forward control driving position with the engine mounted alongside the driver and, 